follow the code of ethics by the IIA. So the IIA, the Institute of Internal Auditors, they have code of ethics and they have four principles that anyone who is conducting control self assessment, regardless if they are member of the AC, uh, of the uh, IIA, if they are uh, CIAs, if they have the uh, uh, CCSA, they need to follow these principles. What are these principles? First is the integrity doing the right thing. Second, objectivity, no conflict of interest. Third, confidentiality, all the information should be confidential. Fourth is competency. They need to understand the standards of IIA when they are conducting the work and they need to have the knowledge, skills and experience to do the work. Now, as I mentioned, anyone, the code is applicable to anyone conducting uh, control self-assessment, regardless if they are members or not members, they hold the control self-assessment certificate or not. Anyone should follow the principles of uh, Code of Ethics by the IIA. Integrity. What is integrity? Integrity is all about having the trust provide the basic of reliance on the judgment of internal auditor. Can we trust internal auditors are going to do the right thing? So for that, internal auditor, they should perform their work with honesty, diligence, and responsibility. Internal auditor, they should follow the law and disclose any information available to them that they need to disclose during their work as well as internal auditor, they should not knowingly be party of any illegal act or engage in any illegal activity, as well as they uh, uh, shall respect and contribute to the legitimate and ethical objective of the organization. So these are the four areas we focus on related to integrity. Now we come to objectivity. If internal auditors are doing anything and they are objective, if uh, internal auditors are objective, the meaning of it, they have no conflict of interest in activity or relationship. So what's the meaning of activity and relationship? Activity, they have no business between them, no dealing between them and the area uh, under review, as well as relationship. It's not like they are, are uh, working with the auditing their cousin or their uh, uh, someone uh, that's really related to them. And we say ob uh, uh, objectivity need to make sure that in case there's a conflict of interest need to be disclosed because in that way, you know, in that case, the manager will assess, should we continue with this engagement or not? Now, remember, when we are conducting control self-assessment, this is, uh, it's not an assurance function, but rather than what, it's like a consulting activity. So objectivity need to be measured based on that terms. When we are providing assurance, definitely, we need to be objective. But as well as when we are doing consulting engagement, maybe objectivity, you know, is going to cause an issue if we have conflict of interest between us and the entity we are working with. So for objectivity, we say shall not participate in any activity or relationship that may impair or presume to impair their unbiased assessment. The participation include those activity and relationship uh, that make uh, a conflict with the interest within the organization, as well as shall not accept anything that may impair or presume to impair their professional judgment. Finally, should, uh, shall disclose all inform material facts known to them that if not disclosed may distort the reporting of the activity under review. So these are the three areas related to objectivity. Now, confidentiality. Internal auditors should respect and value the ownership of the information. The information we obtain during the audit should be protected. Make sure when you leave your office, everything is locked in your office. Nobody can access them. As well as you can't use this information that you obtain during your work for personal benefit. So what they say, internal auditors should uh, uh, be pertinent in the use and the protection of the information obtained during the course of their duties, as well as they should not use the information for personal gain or in, in a, a manner that's contrary to the law and determined to the legitimate and ethical objective of the organization. It's like when you are doing an audit and you know that this organization is going to go and buy certain land, you can't tell your cousin to go and buy that land and after that, uh, you know, they sell it to the organization for, for a huge amount of money. So in that way, you can't use the information you obtain during your work for personal gain. Competency. As internal auditor, you need to have the knowledge, skills, and experience needed to perform your work. So for that, they say first, internal auditors should engage only in those services that they have the knowledge, skills, and experience to perform. Number two, internal auditors should follow the uh, international standards for professional practice framework, the IBBF by IIA, to ensure that all your work is according to the standards. And finally, 
an internal auditor should continue improving their proficiency and, uh, and effectiveness and the quality of their work by doing continuing education, by always developing themselves. So the question will come in the exam the following format. Internal auditors, when they are doing their work, they were careless, they were not paying attention. What do you think? They violated what? Which principle? Well, they violated definitely not competency, they violated integrity, they were not honest, they didn't do the due diligence. Now, let's go on another thing. Internal auditor, when they are doing their work, they didn't follow the standards. Which one they violated? Well, they violated competency. They are not competent. They didn't follow the standards when they are doing their work. So this is where you need to understand what is actually they are speaking about in the question that you have.